lessons learned all, after all being said and done? Mostly 3.0, what have you learned? Well, you know what? I think uh, what I've learned is don't underestimate Malaysians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, it was a far bigger crowd than we'd anticipated. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to uh, be better prepared, uh, you know, we, for, in terms of the crowd, which is why I'm saying don't underestimate Malaysians. Uh, what have I learned from uh, Bursay 3? I have learned that, and this is, this is the not so nice thing that I've learned, I've learned that the authorities can actually uh, go berserk, sorry, for want of a better word. I was at, I'm still reeling from the extent of the violence. And this is a government who was looking liberal, eh? who was looking liberal, who was looking quite good, in fact. And then they do this. So my fear is to what extent are they prepared to go to curb dissent. So I, I find a little bit of disquiet about that. Uh, so I suppose those are the two things that came out from Brussels 3. I've also, it has also taught me that our press can become very, very, can, can go to extremes, which I also didn't think they would get to. Uh, but I've also learned that, um, well, I have, a lot of faith in the Malaysian people, seriously, okay? I mean, over these incidents, for example, that uh, took place outside my house. Mm -hmm. Today, I got so many flowers, I'm telling you. I, I will send you a picture of it. This is just from ordinary, I don't even know who these people are. And it is just pure support. It's a pure standing together with, you know, in solidarity. And that's it. I mean, it's a wonderful thing, you know? Uh, and I think Bursay, what I've learned is that Bursay, and this is nothing to do with me, please, okay? If I'm not there, it will still continue to happen, has, has awakened something in people. It has sparked something positive in people so that they are not looking at their differences. They are only looking at their unity of purpose. And that is a wonderful thing. And it is very hard for people to fight that. And the sooner... The, the authorities realize they can't fight it. And certainly they can't fight it by doing these silly things outside my gate. Uh, you know, they shouldn't fight it. It is, it is actually pretty powerful stuff. And I think they should really wake up to that. How can they scare the government and people in power that they have to resort to this weird and funny thing? Well, you know, I can't help thinking that there could, it could be that. Maybe they're scared of Brussels 4 and they think if they intimidate me enough, it won't happen. But I can tell you, it won't be in my hands because Bursi has grown that way. It won't be in my hands to decide yes or no. They think, you see, they are actually uh, flattering me too much. They think I have all this power uh, when actually I don't. I've always said Bursi is not about me. The power is really in the people. It is a ground up movement. It's not top down. And the sooner people realize that, the better. There's so much ownership of Bursi by people. You can see it from the way they, you know, how they made their own T-shirts and they write about it. They've taken ownership of it. It's not mine. It's not part some outside. And but you not, see, yeah, go on. It's not centralized because it's not. we found out that most of the groups, they did not, they, they have no links to central Yeah, they, they no. came on their own. Correct. Their own T-shirts, their own transportation and everything. They did everything. On, we didn't have to pay anybody. In fact, they paid to buy the T-shirt, right? <laughs> they paid to buy the T-shirt. That's what I'm telling you. It's, you cannot ignore this. And what about global Bursay? 80 over cities, okay? And we had Bursay uh, flags at uh, base camp yes. <laughs> in Malaya and Kota, you know, Mount Kitabalu. And it, it's just captured the imagination of the people. And that's why it is dangerous to fight it so much. People pushing for another ready, 4.0 ready. So yeah, well, we're not, we're not planning that uh, at the moment, no. Because we, well, we don't even know when the elections, do you know what I mean? The elections <laughs> are possibly in June. And you know, we have unfinished business with Bursay 3. Mm -hmm. That unfinished business is the violence in relation to the people. We need to resolve that. That's now, apart from this voter education, that's the other focus that we have. We must bring the people who hurt them to justice. So for me, personally, and I mean at our committee, mm -hmm. for us, that is another thing we are yeah. concentrating on right now. No plan for 4.0 already, for now? For now, no. <laughs> no. Uh, plan 
right now, how many complaints have you received of police brutality? And okay, right? Lawyers for Liberty is also working on it. Yeah. They have received 70 over. Swaram is also working on it. So we've got some very good people who are also working on it. So there are reports. And we put in a memo to Suhakam so today, and we're hoping that we will, if they hear, if they have an inquiry, that all this evidence will come out. But, but uh, Suhakam so themselves admitted that while well, it's good to file a complaint with them, for them it's just a matter of public record. They admit themselves that they have no teeth to bite into the matter. Okay, this is the thing. I was asked this question. Uh, unfortunately, with this government, it's not just Suhakam that is ignored. Even our RCIs are ignored. So, but the process is important because, you know, the government may not be interested in the facts, but the public want to know. We owe it to the public for the facts to come up. Uh, and which is why we're not, look, we're, we don't want the one-sided story to carry on. We want the whole truth to come out. And as I say, if we made mistakes, by all means, let that also come out. If there were people who were violent, let that also come out. But uh, per se, ask for the resignation of the uh, uh, EC. Yes. Then uh, EC refused to step down even after the rally. So uh, what do you think about that? Do you think we will still keep calling for their resignation. Uh, now there is an acute, uh, it, it has brought it into, what has brought the issue of resignation into acute focus is the fact that uh, the number one and number two may be members of UMNO. I mean, I'm still not clear about whether they are or not. And I don't know why there's no clarity. You see, my issue is this. If it is clear cut whether they are members or not, and surely UMNO should know, um, then the response should have come out immediately. Look, they were members from this date to this date. They are now no more members. Why is there such a fudging of the issue? Why is there no clarity about whether they are members or not? So to me, it is, uh, the problem lies in the responses to that statement. Uh, and I, I'm concerned because obviously there's no two ways about it. If they're members of a political party, they cannot be EC chair and vice chair. But this has been calling for a tribunal against the two. So uh, do, you, do you agree that you know, the two should be held on tribunal for possibly deceiving the king, the advocate on Agung, in the appointments? Well, you know, I, I don't know that we necessarily would have gone that far. We were only asking, actually, we were only asking for their resignation. As far as I'm concerned, um, they do owe a duty of full disclosure. I do believe that. Um, but all we wanted was for them to leave. In fact, we have asked for resignation of all the EC members. Uh, so, but whether or not there are grounds for tribunalizing is another issue altogether. I think lawyers will have to look at it and see. But as far as we are concerned, the reason we are asking them to step down is because the public have lost confidence in them. That's another issue altogether. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we will stick by that. We still feel they must step down because the public have lost confidence. But over and above that is the issue of whether they are still members of UMNO. Of the per se eight demands, how many have, 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 you know, have been fulfilled? Do you think have been fulfilled? All right, uh, indelible ink. Except now, there is a question about how they are applying indelible ink. Huh? Uh, we have to look at the Gazette notification because it doesn't look that you look like you dip your finger, you know. It's as if it's a mark. You can't see that. It's of no use, a mark just like that. Uh, so, whether that's, so I'm not, I wouldn't say the jury is out for me on that one as to whether that's fulfilled completely. Uh, okay, the free and fair media, yes. But again, my point, it's only during the... And I don't know how uh, this press is going to transform overnight from being ultra, <laughs> you know, <laughs> partisan to completely non-partisan. I don't know. Okay. Um, the postal votes, there's some progress on advanced voting. But again, we have found from the Gazette, there are issues about the advanced voting, which we are looking at. We have actually asked, Tindak Malaysia is very familiar with that, and they have actually asked the EC for a, sort of a dis you know a sort of a discussion over that so as far as i'm concerned really not not that many of our demands have really been met not enough maybe out of three, three, three out of eight but not fully three left no not even two actually no, um no indelible ink even then i want to know the, the yeah the mechanism of that only half so.
I mean, what is the point in a, you have to dip, you know, in, you've seen yeah, it yeah, on TV, right? You've got to dip, forefinger dip yeah. into the thing. Then then you can see whether the person is. How, how is the impact uh, from the overseas, per se overseas? I mean, yesterday they were protesting. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, I foresee that maybe you know when Najib goes overseas, when there's a they will never be alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you know what? This whole thing about overseas voters—they need to look at it. You know, you can't say we don't have the logistics. That's the yeah, word used yeah. by the PSC. Yeah? yeah. How can you say that to deprive someone of their right to vote? And. They announced in October last year, the EC announced that they were going to make provision for overseas and then suddenly that disappears. So really, you know, they've been, they need to address that. So. They need to address that. Because and Ameri you know, Americans can do it. I mean, Americans can do it. And we live in a globe, it shows you we live in a global. <laughs> Indonesia does it. Thank you. Our so-called poorer neighbor. Correct. They have. Yeah. yeah, they do. And I tell you, um, it's, it's a globalized world. You can't say, and you know, this is the response, you see, makes them angry too. That's why sometimes they just don't know how to win friends and <laughs> influence people, okay? Uh, because what they do is they alienate. They're, they're good at alienating. When overseas voters say we want to come back and vote, they say, ah, who asked you to leave the country? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Who asked you to leave the country? You know, and like, immediately you alienate all these people out there when actually what you should be doing is finding out why they're leaving, all right? It's our fault. And making it better here so that they will come back. That's how you win the hearts and minds of the people. They really need a lesson in how to win the hearts and minds of the people because they're really doing a bad job of it at the moment. Uh, I just have described you all as a minority kind of group compared to the interests of the majority. No, that, yeah, that's the usual answer. <laughs> and you know what? It's a mistake to make that statement. You see, when you're in leadership, uh, even, even, all right, if 10,000 people took a stand, you have to listen. Are you saying, because you think they're a minority, that you don't have to listen to them? Are you saying that our push for free and fair elections is not legitimate because only 250,000 people turned up? Look at our background. Malaysians were brought up in this atmosphere of fear for many, many, many years. That's why last year people were shocked at the numbers that turned up because actually they overcame these years of fear. Today, Bursay 3, it's even bigger, all right? Um, and you know, it's not just the people out there who support free and fair elections. We also have a silent majority, by the way, who didn't come out to the streets, <laughs> just as they have a silent majority, so do we. So, you know what? These are silly arguments when they say uh, it's not the majority and they're really silly arguments, all right? Uh, the very fact that 250,000 Malaysians who in the past would never have come out, came out to make a statement is something they really should pay attention to. And you know what? If they don't, it's a mistake. It's their mistake. Malaysia Kini.com Malaysia Kini Malaysia Kini Malaysia Kini